Hey everyone, Rob here, and we have some updates on the eruption in Iceland. Now, first things first, the Miradala Trail to the eruption site will be closed until 1 o'clock today, as the trail has to be used to transport equipment from the fire brigade, uh, which is currently fighting a bunch of wildfires near the eruption center. Now, in an announcement from the Southern Police, it says that the area is going to be open uh, from the southern road, but the hiking trails will be closed at 6 o'clock this evening. It's old news now they're closing it every day 6 p.m uh, has has been the case uh, for the past couple of days now the closure of the eruption area went well yesterday there was no accidents recorded which is great news and it's been reported that most people understand that the uh, access to the area is of course being restricted and apparently people are taking it pretty good but again there's wildfires still burning in the area firefighters are working on that and uh, the fire department in Grindavik has planned the most preparedness for the fires uh, since the eruption began. Uh, moving on, we have from the Meteorological uh, Society, or office here in Eisen, showing the spread of the lava according to new measurements from the university's Geological Institute, uh, and that's the University of Iceland. Uh, the measurements show that the average lava flow from July 18 to 23rd was about 8 uh, cubic meters per second uh, when it had been erupting for about two weeks. The area of new lava has been about 1.2 kilometers squared and its volume is about 12.4 million cubic meters. Now, the, new, or the, uh, the meteorological agency has installed a new webcam in cooperation with civil defense here in Iceland to monitor the possible overflow of lava out of this area and further south. Uh, we don't have access to the webcam yet, but I'm assuming that's going to be coming online pretty soon. Now, twice the lava has changed its course from this area, so um, it's it's good news because it's slowed down the, process, uh, the progress of the lava to the southern road. But, of course, with eruptions in general, it's very difficult to estimate if and or when it will escape the valley and head down towards that road. Now, we also have a bunch of stuff coming out of from the University of Iceland. Again, this is in conjunction with what we were looking at uh, just a second ago. We have charts and, and measurements of the lava area, the lava volume, the discharge, and then if we go down, we get sort of gas release and things like that. I'll post a link to this for those of you that want a bit more detailed on the science behind what's going on and the composition of this lava. So it's a great resource, again, coming out of the University of Iceland. Now, on top of everything now, uh, we have, of course, this is a great vantage point. It takes a, a little bit longer to get to this point, but Civil Defense is going to be going with an excavator to the area below Meridala to investigate how lava flows along high voltage lines buried in underground cables. Now, this is a project in conjunction with a bunch of different people, um, and they're using this opportunity to look at a place where lava is expected to flow over put stuff in the ground uh, and sort of have this replica of high voltage lines to see how it will react in the event that uh, lava is going to go over it. Now they want to measure the heat that rises uh, and when the lava flows over it and then the temperature of the poles that hold everything up, thermometers are going to be placed in the ground, all this stuff. It's a really big opportunity for them to do it and it's a continuation of the experiments that were carried out. Uh, with dikes and other things like that during the 2021 eruption. So then, a t back then, a total of five were installed, and uh, they're looking to continue that experiment to see how, how lava is affecting the infrastructure they have. They want to get this because we don't know if this area in the Reykjanes Peninsula is coming to an end or if it's going to last another 50, 100 years. Who knows how long these eruptions are going to keep going and they want to be as prepared as possible. So that's uh, that's part of that. Now, one last piece of news that I wanted to go through, and this was coming out uh, from a Facebook post, which was coming out of some of the news. And Thorvaldur Thorson, a professor uh, of volcanology at the University University of Iceland said in a conversation with MBF or Morgenblatt, which is the physical uh, paper, and they have an online version, that the area between Keller and Trolldinga is ve being very closely monitored. And that's kind of what we're looking at here in this map. We can see Trolldinga and Keller, so it's just this area in between. We can see at the bottom where the eruption is currently taking place. Now, 
he's saying that um, the seismic activity and other activity has been observed there, and there's a realistic chance of an eruption in that area. Now, if there was an eruption near there or north of it, he's saying that there would be a completely different scenario. So seismic activity and other ground activity has been observed in the area since the current eruption. And people have also seen so-called seismic shadows in that area, which is making everyone wonder if magma could possibly be accumulating underground at a shallow depth. Uh, there's also increased uh, thermal activity in the area, geothermal vapors and things have been coming up through the cracks, which is uh, a lot of indications that something's going on below ground. Now, the trend has been occurring since the eruption began. All seems relatively new, but if it turns out to be true, there's a real possibility that the lava will emerge from craters in the area between these two things, and um, it would just be a new, a new eruption. It could change the game completely, and if it flows there to the north, Reykjanesbraut, which is the road that connects Reykjavik to the airport, will become vulnerable. I know that there's a lot of talk about that road, but uh, it's definitely something that everyone's looking at. So... That's that's all the news for now. There's a lot in one day, but um, nothing groundbreaking yet. We are going to keep an eye on some of these areas. So, yeah, stay tuned to see what's coming up next. If you're traveling to the eruption site, remember to stay safe, stay out of the danger zone, and follow all the instructions of the police and the rescue team that are there helping out. So, a big thanks to them. So, until next time, thank you so much.